uh, MTV Cribs, Sports World style. We'll be your guests. Come on in. As you can see, we have a swapping huge estate. Uh, kids doing schoolwork. Always, always schoolwork. Mama in the back just organizing things. And uh, yeah, humble abode, you know. Not everyone can do this. We've been on the road for four weeks now. So I, uh, I talked to Tim about a couple months ago and I said, hey Tim, what do you think about a road trip? And I'll bring my family and I'll just bust out as many assemblies as possible in four or five, six weeks, whatever the time frame is. And you guys book them and I'll just knock them down. And um, of course, Tim was like, let's do it. And so um, we started planning. And so uh, we, it would boil down to four weeks, four states. And we were going to try to get as many kids as possible. My mentor of 18 years always said that if you're going to do ministry, you gotta, you got to do it with your family because it's easy to get burnt out or separated um, just in a different mind space. You want to get it on camera. It's kind of oh, you got it. Yes! You got it. It's kind of impressive. He chopped in half. Boom. We actually did this four years ago uh, in 2018. Uh, that trip we did in an RV as well for 10 weeks. And I think we hit 22 states and uh, 10,000 miles. 10,000 miles. And how many students did you speak to? 25,000. 25,000. So that was, yeah, in 2018. So we've done this before. Um, so this is just a four week little uh, drop in the bucket here. And um, yeah, it's been fun. This is like, this is life changing, I think, for our kids. I know for our kids, because at home, he goes away. He gets on an airplane, he's gone for a week, and then he comes home and it's very um, separate. But ministry and then home life. Um, so for, for them to come and see what he does and be a part of it, he's, he, Rosie's gotten to go with him on quite a few uh, school assemblies. Um, that's our oldest. and. We've all got to participate in some of the um, evening outreach stuff. Um, it's just, it's awesome because then the kids really see us out being the feet and hands of Jesus, out doing, you know. That Daddy's not just going to work somewhere and coming back. Like, they are, they're a part of it. And that's really important to us because uh, for a job like this where he's, you know, it's travel is a necessity. He's going to a community to share Jesus. It's, um, yeah, it's either he's gone or we come with him. Those are our options. So I feel really blessed that we've been able to uh, do this trip this year and, and our trip four years ago. And um, Sports World has been amazing and supporting not only Tom, but also um, us as his family.
So basically we just got done with our assembly um, and basically I tell them my story and I tell them my hopes, my dreams, my fears and my failures and then I encourage them to share with me what's going on in their life. I basically say I, I told you my story, I would love to hear your story and then we hand out our cards uh, where it, you know it's you're not born a winner, you're not born a loser but you are born a chooser and I ask them to fill out their name, their grade and then give us comments. And because I'm real and raw with them, a lot of times they'll open up and just tell us. So we're looking for any concern cards, red flags, um, you know, cutting, addictions, uh, yeah, problems in the household. And then basically we do, we, we make copies of them and make sure the principals see them. And it's a way to come alongside the school and the students and the teachers and help them identify kids that are going through a lot. And then hopefully they get the help they need because uh, it takes a village and so that's our, our heart at Sports World is to help uh, come alongside the teachers and um, build better communities. I know that there's lots of struggles in the schools. I know we do the Illinois Youth Survey and I see the answers that the children give and I know there's lots of anxiety and there's lots of depression and there's suicide is one of their number one concerns for kids their age is depression and suicide and so a speaker that can come in and reach them and connect with them on a level where they're ready to be transparent is amazing because then they're ready to change. They're ready to make some different choices in their life. And these cards show that Tom truly connected with them and they're ready to share their heart and say, I need help. I need, I need to talk to someone. And so that is amazing to me. I love coming out and hearing him speak. This young man says, my dad strangles my mom. And, uh, and she's the best in, in doing a lot of trouble. Like, so just like straight up, just being raw and real. Like, this is what they have to deal with. And then we're mm -hmm. expecting them to like, learn, learn, learn. And I'm like, they're in trauma. Yeah. They need to talk, they need to, they need help outside of school. And that's why I love what you do, because mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're in the community going, we can get you that help. So it's essential. We it, it takes a village, and yeah, it does. we cannot do this alone. And it's more than school. We we're trying to raise people that are good community members. So it's uh, it's important to, to reach them and to speak truth over them. Mm -hmm. and them. There's one. It says, right now it feels like there is no hope for that to happen. I've lost so many people. I'm scared um, with all my stuff going on that I will just give up basically says sometimes I feel useless then again I probably am why do I exist for an eighth grader to have those questions or that pain it's heavy a lot of depression a lot of just feeling out of control Yes, in past years when I've been with, with Sports World Outreach speakers, um, a lot of times it's drugs, it's alcohol, those kinds of things, a sad home lives. But this week we've actually seen two cards that say they were being sexually abused. And those are kind of shocking to me, um, that they're reaching out for help and the principals were able to get them help immediately. So good things there. I think it's a great message for students to hear someone who was successful, is successful, but had struggles to get there. It wasn't handed to him. Like he had a choice that he had to make every day. And I love what you said about, um, you know, you had to focus on what's right here, right now in front of me. And so often kids think long term of like, I'm never going to graduate or I'm never going to get to here. And it's like, you just have to focus, like you said, on that one thing that might be a test or it might be, you know, I just have to get through this shift at work or yeah. this rough night at home, whatever it is. If you can just focus on that one thing to get you through to whatever that next thing is. Yeah. I thought it was great. Um, I love that he captured their attention with the snowboarding story and then was able to lead into um, a deeper message. I think he captured their attention. Um, I love the fact that my 11 year old son was able to be there and to um, hear the message. Um, going into middle school, 
there's a lot of things that change from leaving from elementary school, so it was great that he was getting a positive message on, you know, that he has a choice. Social media, um, the just like they never get away. I feel like um, there's a pressure to constantly, you know, be performing, to be seen. Um, obviously, drugs and alcohol and vaping are everywhere. Um, as a counselor, I think students struggle a lot with their mental health now. And I think after COVID, which I hate talking about COVID, but after COVID and just, you know, being isolated and, but they're not really isolated because they're online. Yeah. Um, so they're just, it's harder for them, I feel like, to find themselves because they're bombarded by so many different, you know, things. So we are headed to a church. It's Wednesday night, uh, the fourth week on the road. This is our normal MO. Um, and so we're going to go to a church. We invited a bunch of kids back there after uh, doing our assemblies. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go share the best story ever told. Obviously, we're limited in the public school of what we can say and what we can't say. Um, so again, we just want to bring them back so we can share with them the rest of the, the good news, uh, the full good news, uh, which is that they are loved, they are seen, they are they're heard, and uh, Jesus has a purpose, has a reason, and um, he is the way, the truth, and the life. So we get to share the good news with them at the churches. God has come near. He says, repent, believe the good news. That's what we all need to do. And so I'm just going to make that invitation open to each and every one of you guys. And we're going to bow your heads. And I just want to pray over you guys. Tom's message, his testimony. Um, I just think it's so good for kids to hear students that their dreams and their aspirations and they're sorting through all that while being influenced by the world. Just his, uh, his message just resonates so well with them. It's so cool to hear it from somebody that's achieved all the things that they want to achieve and understand that, you know, that, that's lacking if you don't have a relationship with your Creator and with Jesus. So super, super cool um, and thankful for his time. It was pretty rad. It was good. Uh, we had about uh, a bunch of people. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people made decisions for Christ, which is awesome. Raised their hand, said yes, got prayer, and yeah, it was, it was a good night. I think that hopefully our principles and what we've been encouraging is to keep this message alive. Keep reminding them. Um, bring back another speaker. Um, some of the, the principals were given a poster that Tom signed. And I think if some of those principals would take that poster and then maybe a month or two from now, bring it back to their remembrance, bring it alive, have a giveaway for the poster. Like those are things that will keep it going as long as the schools also keep reminding the students of everything great that they heard. I, it's a great reminder for them, especially right now. <laughs> we're in the middle of the first semester. You know, all the fun stuff's kind of like died down the excitement of coming back to school. So coming right now and just kind of um, reminding them that, you know, you may be in a hard spot right now or you might um, be struggling in a class. It's not over yet. You know, it's just, this is just a blip on, you know, your life and it's, it's gonna get better. So just reminding them of that and hearing it from somebody else who's had real life experience. I mean, you've traveled the world. So you have plenty of real life experiences to share. And being able to get the kids that are in school and get to hear his message in there of about, you know, being born a chooser and being able to choose um, a path and making the right choices 
around those things, but then being able to get them in here in the evening and in a church building and somewhere where Tom can share the part of his story that really um, changed his direction and changed his life, and that was following Christ. And so being able to share the gospel with these students and being able to get them to connect with their creator and understand that, that they're, they are a creation and that they have a creator who wants a relationship with them um, and to love and care for them. And just the way Tom brought that tonight was awesome. Um, really excited for these students to get to go back now into the school and share that with their other classmates. It's just been a whirlwind, but it's been awesome to just kind of share with people what we're doing, how they can get involved and, and really just like be a part of their community and, and get people into the local church. I'm excited to be going home, um, sleeping in my bed, but I will be missing the road because it's been an epic trip so far.